Hi folks and welcome to 5 Minute Friday. This one is a little bit different. I am joined by a gentleman called Spike Kaiser who reached out to me because he found out something really interesting about the Nest Pension Scheme. Okay, want to get straight into it because the interview is slightly more than 5 minutes but not that much more and the less I waffle on here, the better. So here's my quick conversation with Spike Kaiser. Okay, Spike, great to have you with me. Welcome to 5 Minute Friday on Meaningful Money. Firstly, mate, tell me who you are and what you do. Uh, so I'm Spike Kaiser. Uh, I'm a computer science graduate. It's just uh, graduated in the summer and now working at a fintech company in London. Uh, and I've also just started a personal finance YouTube channel uh, to educate the masses. Marvelous. A man after my own heart. That's what we like. <laughs> I'll uh, make sure we put, um, obviously, a link to your YouTube channel. You tell us a little bit more about it at the end. But you reached out to me, Spike, about a week or so ago because of something you had found out almost by accident. Um, so first of all, tell me what you were up to, which uh, made you find out this thing. What were you planning? Yes, yeah, so I was uh, planning on making a video uh, about pensions. Uh, most importantly, sort of uh, contribution pensions, match contributions pensions. Uh, and I did a bit, a bit of digging into Nest, so one of the biggest providers in the UK. Exactly. Nest, obviously, one of the biggest auto-enrollment providers. So a lot of people, it's the sort of default pension that their employers have set up. So what did you find out? Uh, yeah, so the default fund that they put you in, uh, that actually Nest claims 90% of people stay in uh, for the rest of their lives, are the uh, retirement date funds, which are basically the funds that is a multi-asset portfolio fund. They rebalance for you throughout your uh, retirement or well, savings career. Uh, and that's how they advertise it to you. And in the little blurb that comes with the fund when you click it, uh, basically says, yeah, we'll rebalance it uh, based on assets, based on what risk you want. Uh, and as myself and many people assumed, that would mean that you'd start off high risk and then generally get lower and lower risk into more bonds and safer assets as you get closer to retirement. Um, but upon further investigation, I found out that that fund, as well as their ethical fund, has a three-phase process rather than those two phases of consolidating out as you get older. Um, and it's this foundation fund that they have at the beginning, uh, which they basically put you in if you're under 27. Uh, so if you get also enrolled at 22, which is the legal minimum, or before that, if you have a really nice company that enrolls you earlier, uh, you've got about five years uh, in this foundation phase, which is basically... A phase where they aim to protect your money rather than have it grow. Uh, they try and keep up with inflation, uh, but they don't seem to want to grow it much in the idea that they want to protect your money and not scare you off from investing uh, and cancelling your pension altogether, which I found <laughs> very odd. Yeah, very odd. So the first phase is sort of will ease you in really gently by protecting your money and only start sort of uh, exposing it to some kind of uh, material risk a little bit later on. That is bizarre. Now, you reached out also to Moneybox uh, yes. on Radio 4, and last Friday you were on there. So do you want to just tell us a little bit about how that happened? Yes, I, I found this out. I thought it was odd. I thought most likely I was reading it wrong rather than I, it was just massive flaw uh, in my opinion. So I posted it on Reddit, UK Personal Finance subreddit. Ah, okay, yeah. It's got a lot of people on it. And um that kind of blew up and a lot of people were also surprised. Uh, so then it was like a legit thing that <laughs> sure. seems to be happening. Uh, and then Moneybox, one of the researchers there, reached out to me, invited me on to talk about it. Wow. And um, they brought the uh, chief investment officer onto the show uh, to kind of defend his point and have a pension advisor. And we just kind of talked a bit about why they were doing it. So what, was the, what, was, was, what did they say was the reason for doing that? Yeah, so their saying is that they're scared that anyone under 27 who's new to investing doesn't quite understand it. Uh, for example, with the coronavirus currently, with the markets going down, sure. they would think, all right, I'm going to log into my pension for the first time, see that it's down, and then decide that they don't want to lose money, so it's going to cancel the pension altogether for some reason. That, that would be the smarter idea. Um, so basically, that, yeah, doing this sort of nannying and looking after you, being mm. like, these people are going to make the wrong decision, so we're going to at a massive cost of compounding interest over your lifetime, going to put you in this little safe haven to protect you for a few years, but then put you in a high-risk fund when you hit 27 anyway. 27? So a completely yeah. arbitrary date. So, Spike, you're 21, 22, right? Yeah, 22. So yeah. you're potentially going to miss out on five years of growth. That's a long time, isn't it? And yeah, then, obviously, you compound mm -hmm. that lost five years. I mean, that's incredible. 40 years is, yeah, tens of thousands of pounds, depending on how many you're contributing a month. It's, uh, yeah, it's a massive cost, which was, if you listen to the money box, uh, interview, the, the guy from Nest kind of played down a little bit saying it wasn't a massive, uh, cost to the average consumer. But if, if you do the maths, it, it's quite simple to see that you, yes, it doesn't make a massive difference once you hit 27. It's a few thousand pound difference based on the last five years of bull market. But that 
few thousand pounds compounded over 40 years can make a massive difference once you reach 60, 70 that you're going to start retiring. And the annoying thing is it just seems very arbitrary and a little bit too nanny in the sort of state sort of thing. No, it's not the state, obviously, but, you know, a little bit too uh, paternalistic, really. It's like, oh, we'll ease you mm. in gently. I mean, surely far better to educate um, and benefit people rather than try to limit losses rather than surely better to maximize gains in those crucial early years yeah 100 percent. i think that my advice to nestor and the money box show was to rather than automatically put them in this nanny box of you have no idea what you're doing so we're going to protect you at all costs uh have a little thing that pops up saying like we're going to be putting you in this high risk fund to start off with because you're lower you've got years of compounding to bring out the kinks of the market uh, and then give them the option if they really want to, to go into lower risk at a younger age, if they really are scared of investing to kind of check it out themselves and mm. test the water. But uh, yeah, definitely shouldn't be putting 90% of their users in this five For stage sure. phase. So that's your advice to Nest. What would be your advice to folks in their early 20s who are saving into Nest? Uh, so yeah, firstly, log into your account. Uh, that's the other thing. Probably most people under 27 probably aren't even looking into their pension and probably logging not. in. Um, so log into your account, check that you're probably most likely in the retirement fund. You haven't changed it. Uh, and then uh, I would withdraw from that fund. Uh, there's no way of changing the allocation what they do behind the scenes. You've actually got to change from that fund and change over to either the higher risk fund that they've got or the Sharia law fund that they've got. Those are the only two funds that they offer that aren't either low risk uh, or got this five-year phase in. So the ethical fund as well has this five-year foundation phase in. So don't change that either because they put you in the same low risk. Amazing. Or they're ethical. This is still low risk assets. Well, Spike, kudos to you, man, for finding this out and getting the word out. And when you approach me, I, I get a lot of approaches, but it was like, man, alive, I had no idea. So probably most <laughs> people have no idea. So well done. And, you know, kudos for getting onto Moneybox as well. So because obviously people need to hear this. So mm. um, tell me about the YouTube man, uh, channel, mate. What, what's, um, what's, what are you up yeah. to and what are you planning for that? Uh, so, yeah, you've been a massive inspiration uh, for that. But basically, over the last uh, few years, since I've got into investing since about 18, uh, a lot of friends and people around me have been asking me for, like, how what an ISA is and how like, all these basic sort of things that I thought was quite straightforward as a setting up a bank account. But obviously, this isn't taught in schools. Uh, and what, what you yourself do and Moneybox does and all the other, like, American YouTubers that are now going with this fire movement and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see many people making videos on financial education. Uh, so I thought... People around me are asking for help. YouTube is fun. It's a good way to get the message out to more people. Yeah. Um, so I started up a channel. So yeah, kind of teach people basic finance, how to invest in stocks, bonds, how to build portfolios, and Brilliant. yeah, how to save. Amazing. Yeah. Fantastic. What's the name of the channel? Uh, so it's just Spike Kaiser. Uh, oh, so nice. Spike and then Kaiser, spot K-E-I-Z-E-R. Uh, so yeah, just my name. I will make sure there's a link to that. Well, Spike, more power to you, man. There's more of us doing this, the better. And yours is a voice that I think... Uh, people need to hear and uh, I, I forecast great things for you my friend so look, thank you so much for reaching out to me and thank you for coming on today thank you very much for having me okay my thanks to spike you know what you need to do folks i'll make sure there's uh, just a bit of a description under here just to clarify that and obviously i'll make sure there's links to spike's youtube channel and if i can at least his interview with moneybox live so spike thank you so much once again for joining me thank you for joining me hope you have a great weekend and i'll see you in next week's five minute friday